Buying a house is the dream for many people in my age group. Unfortunately, buying a house is pretty difficult at the moment because of the everything. Listen, I don't know stuff about the economy and talking about numbers makes my brain come out of my ears, but I know enough to know that stuff is very messed up right now in the economy, which makes trying to own a home all the more difficult, especially when house prices just keep skyrocketing through the roof. But last year, I actually managed to buy my first house, which is pretty cool. And it was also <laughs> one of the most agonizingly stressful things I've ever done in my life. It almost involved a lawsuit. So let's talk about it. But before we get into it, it's time for a real quick, hey star, whatcha drawin'? The art in the background of this video is for some I the Somnium Files fan merch I made recently. I've gotten a bit obsessed with the game since I beat it back in January, so I wanted to make some stuff for it. Date and Mizuki acrylic charms and stickers are up in my store now, link is in the description, and I'll be adding some more characters once I finish the sequel. Anyway, back to the story. Our story begins in 2019. I just moved back to the States after spending the previous two years working as an English teacher overseas in Japan. My younger brother had finished college a few months before, and since neither of us had better options for roommates at the time and both wanted to move out of our parents' house, we ended up getting an apartment together. The rent on our shared apartment was surprisingly reasonable for Austin, and to be honest, when I saw the prices online, I thought it was going to be one of those too-good-to-be-true situations where the pictures made the apartments look way nicer than they actually were. But we toured the place and really liked it, and we moved in not long after that. The apartment was spacious, had a dining room that I converted into my home office, the bedrooms were on opposite sides of the apartment so we wouldn't bother each other too much, and it had a nice spacious balcony where my brother could put all his plants. But, of course, the good things can't last forever, and eventually, something was bound to ruin it. Cut to the end of 2021. My brother and I had been living at this apartment for a little over two years, and because of the panini, our rent prices had stayed pretty much the same throughout that entire time. Also, he and I were planning on moving out in the spring. I needed more space for my business, and he would be finishing paramedic school soon and would need to move to a place closer to wherever he got a job. So we were already planning on moving out probably around March or April. But then, at the end of November, the day before Thanksgiving, I got a phone call. Hello? Hello, this is your apartment's leasing office. I'm just calling to inform you that we'll be raising the price of your rent starting in March of next year. Sheesh, okay, how much is it going up by? Right, well, you can either stay on your month-to-month -month lease, or you can sign a one-year lease, which will make your rent cheaper. Okay, so what are the actual numbers? Well, if you sign a one-year lease, your rent will only increase by $600 a month. <laughs> But if you'd like to stay on a month-to-month -month lease, your rent will go up by $800 per month. Oh, okay. That's all. Have a nice day. Thanks, I won't. So, that sucked. We couldn't sign a year lease because, again, we were already planning on moving in just a few months. But now we were basically being priced out of our apartment and had to expedite our move-out plans. And this made things complicated. See, my brother was planning on getting another apartment by himself, and he managed to do that just fine, but for me, I had been hoping to buy a house when I eventually moved out of our shared apartment. I was pretty nervous about it, but my parents talked me into it, saying, if you're gonna be paying a bunch of money on a place to live, you might as well put it into a house. Which was true, but I was still really nervous about the idea of home ownership. Plus, I was anticipating that I'd have some time to search out the perfect house and find one that I really loved before committing. In short, no. Not only was I now on a deadline to get out of our current apartment before March, there was another problem that was making me cut things really close. When you want to buy a house, usually a lender will want to see two years worth of your tax statement as proof of your stable income. And, well... Because I had been living in Japan, about nine months of my previous two years of taxes was foreign income, which just makes everything way more complicated. 
My loan broker told me it would be a lot easier to manage if I just waited until the start of 2022 after I officially had two years of US income on my record. Which meant that, functionally, I couldn't really start looking for a house until January and had to find a house and close on it before the end of February. And since the process of closing on a house usually takes about 30 days, it meant that I had to find a house, make an offer, get the offer accepted, and start the closing process in a little less than a month. Commence panic mode. Another complication was that in early 2022, the housing market was going absolutely insane. House listings would go up for sale and then get taken down within 48 hours because they had already been purchased. People were making offers way over the asking price just to have a chance at getting their offer accepted, and the competition was intense. And this was the real estate piranha pool I was expected to jump into if I didn't want to be homeless by spring. I kept thinking, man, maybe I should just get an apartment instead. But the honest fact was that rent for a one bedroom apartment in Austin was more than what my mortgage would be if I bought a house. Because, okay, the one asset I had on my side was that location wasn't an issue. By this point, I was fully self-employed and can do my art job from anywhere as long as it had good internet and a post office nearby. I ended up having to leave Austin, but I figured that as long as I was still reasonably close to the city and could still drive in to go shopping and visit friends occasionally, it would work out. And if I was going to be leaving the city anyway, I might as well buy a house, right? And so, the house search began. My mom, my realtor, and I looked at dozens of houses over the first half of January in a bunch of different towns, and unfortunately, most of the stuff within my relatively low budget ended up being in kind of sketchy neighborhoods. The first house I ended up making an offer on was a cute little house in a town about an hour north of Austin. It was priced a little high for the size, and it was honestly a bit small for what I needed, but I liked the neighborhood and the house wouldn't really need any renovations. Since it had been on the market for a few weeks and hadn't sold yet, I ended up making them an offer of $5,000 less than the asking price, just to see if they'd take it. And then they made a counter offer of $5,000 over the original asking price. And I just, what are you doing? That's not how this works. So we went back and forth for a little while, just trying to haggle and they kept trying to haggle me back up to the original listing price and pretty much refused to give me the house for anything less. And considering, again, the house was on the small side for what I wanted, I ended up just getting frustrated and dropping the offer and moving on. The second house I made an offer on was gorgeous, was relatively new and didn't need any work done to it, had a cool loft over the garage I wanted to use as a cosplay workspace, plenty of space for my small business, and a big open layout with tons of natural light, which was a priority for me. I loved it so much, I ended up making an offer of almost 10000 over the asking price and still got outbid. Yeah, that one broke my heart a little bit, but we just had to take the loss and move on. The last house was on the older side, but it was in a gorgeous neighborhood with lots of trees that was very well established and felt very safe. The house needed new carpets and a fresh coat of paint, along with a few other minor repairs like replacing the blinds and window screens, doing some yard work, and a few other things. Nothing that needed any major cost to repair, but it had its fair share of projects in the works. The owner was apparently in a hurry to move and ended up listing the house for pretty cheap since he wouldn't have time to make the repairs it needed before he sold it. However, all the offers he'd had had all fallen through for one reason or another, and the house had been up on the market for a while, which, again, was really unusual considering the hyper-competitive market at the time. While the idea of having to work on the house made me hesitate, the good of the house ended up outweighing the bad, and I made an offer on it. The buyer accepted, and the house was secured. Unfortunately, this was only the beginning. So, if you're unfamiliar with house buying terms, closing on a house basically means just doing all the necessary paperwork and getting all the documents in order before the ownership actually gets transferred. And this usually takes a few weeks to a month from my understanding. 
and it involved me going back and forth with my realtor, signing paperwork, hiring a home inspector, negotiating costs with the seller, more paperwork, and notably getting a lender to actually give me money to buy a house. Which, in my case, was not easy. So, here's the thing. All things considered, I have a pretty good credit score. I got my first credit card in college and have pretty much always paid it off monthly, minus a few times where I just goofed and missed a deadline. But a good credit score is only part of what you need before a lender will consider giving you money. Do you know how hard it is to get a lender to take a chance on you when you have never owned property before, your single income, and you're not only an artist for a living, but a self-employed freelance artist? I will tell you right now, it is very, very difficult. The guy helping me secure a loan is actually a cousin of mine, so he gave me the family discount on his services, which I was very glad for, because oh my god, trying to get a loan with reasonable interest rate from anybody was a literal nightmare that took so much back and forth, and I ended up actually having to get two loans for reasons I will talk about later. I had to get so much paperwork together. All of my bank statements for the last two years, all of my tax returns, I had to get my accountant to write multiple letters to lenders explaining that yes, I do actually own my business. I had to write a letter to a lender basically describing all of my different sources of income. Hell, at one point, I had a lengthy back and forth between my loan broker, my accountant, the lender, and myself because the lender didn't know what Kickstarter was, and I had to explain that no, Kickstarter is not the name of a loan shark. I just wrote a book in 2021 and ran a crowdfunding campaign to print it and that yes, I did still have to pay taxes on my income from that project. And they kept asking me for a letter from my accountant confirming this and my accountant just got so annoyed at them. And when they kept pushing, I basically just shoved my 1099 tax form from Kickstarter in their faces and said, please just Google what Kickstarter is you idiots before they finally left me alone. <sighs> anyway, it was a nightmare and a half, but eventually I was able to sign a contract with a lender to get my home loan sorted. I had started packing up my side of the apartment and despite the speed bumps, everything was finally coming together until it wasn't. About a week before closing date, the date that I would actually, you know, sign the paperwork and own the house. I got a call from my realtor with some very bad news. Apparently, the seller's realtor had found out during the closing process that there was a lien on the property. And if you know what a lien is, you know how bad that is. But if you're like me and don't know what a lien is, um, it is, according to the dictionary, a right to keep possession of property belonging to another person until a debt owed by that person is discharged. Let's say... Bob owns a house. He hires a company to help with some renovations on his house, but for one reason or another, he doesn't pay them. The company can then put a lien on Bob's house that basically makes it so Bob legally can't sell the house until he pays the company for the work that they did. Which is bad when you are trying to buy a house from Bob and are supposed to close in less than a week. Apparently, the lien was put on the house because of a solar panel company that the seller, and screw it, I'm just gonna call the seller Bob from now on. Anyway, Bob apparently hired a company to put solar panels on the house, and the lien came from the solar panel company saying, pay us what you owe us, or you can't sell the house. Which was very odd, because the house doesn't have solar panels. Our best guess is that Bob tried to get solar panels at one point and then didn't, and then didn't pay the company anything because they didn't do anything. But I guess maybe he signed a contract and he still needed to pay them for something? A anyway, it all got very confusing and very dumb, and the solar company refused to lift the lien until they got paid, and Bob kept arguing that he doesn't owe them any money because they didn't do anything, and the whole thing dragged out so long that we had to delay the closing date by over a month. I ended up getting in some trouble with my original lender because we had to back out of the first loan because we missed the closing deadline, almost had to pay a huge fine that my loan broker was thankfully able to get us out of. 
And then we had to switch loan companies and go through the entire loan getting process again, which went more paperwork and more pestering my accountant and more explaining that, no, I'm not a sugar baby. I run a damn business. Here's the receipts. Please let me buy a house. Uh. The worst part is that during the extra few weeks it took to get a new loan sorted out, interest rates went up by almost a whole percent. So because of Bob's stupid solar panel nonsense, my monthly payments ended up being a lot more than they should have originally been, and I was now in hot water because my new closing date was past the day I was supposed to be out of my apartment, which is great. Fortunately, Bob had already moved out of the house by this point. He'd basically packed up and left within a week of me putting an offer on the house. So with some helpful finessing from my realtor, I was still able to move into the house before I had to be out of my apartment. I just didn't own it yet. I was basically able to sign a short-term lease on the house from Bob for a month so I wouldn't be homeless while we went through the closing process all over again. The nice part was that I technically got to live in my house rent-free because of this, because I didn't end up having to pay anything to, for the lease. But because of the solar panel drama, there was some talk that Bob might end up taking the solar panel company to court over the Leon, and I might have to start the home searching process all over again. Thankfully, that didn't happen, and the solar panel company eventually backed down and relented and let me buy the house, but... That was a very stressful month or so, but at least I wasn't homeless. It took another month to go through the entire process of closing, again, and I was finally able to sit down and sign all the documents, wire a just stupid amount of money over to the title company for the down payment, and when all was said and done, I finally owned my first home. And then as soon as the notary left, I packed up and I drove over to Home Depot because it was time for renovating. So like I said before, house needed some work. And seeing as I had just spent an entire month living there and hadn't been able to start on any renovations because I was basically still renting it, once the papers were signed, I was ready to get to work. One of the first things we actually did, which doesn't really count as a renovation, was fixing the lighting. Because I'm pretty sure Bob might have been a vampire or something, because I am not exaggerating when I say that every single light fixture in the entire house had at least one burnt out bulb in it. Every single one. We ended up replacing like 15 light bulbs the day I moved in, and some of them are still burnt out because the bulbs are weird and I don't use those lights very much anyway, so I haven't bothered hunting down replacements. The next thing to go were the carpets. Most of the house doesn't have them, but the few rooms that do have carpet, well, if you told me that the previous owner hadn't vacuumed for 10 years, I would have believed you. I swear the carpets were at least 50% pet hair and they stank like a dog. I considered just getting them professionally cleaned, which would have been a lot cheaper, but I ultimately decided to just rip it all out and get some new carpets. But before the carpet was installed, my mom and I spent a few days giving all the carpeted rooms a fresh coat of paint. The paint in the bedrooms was all white, but each one was a slightly different shade of white, and there was one which was even like a pinkish white, which was really weird. So we wanted to get them all to the same base white that I could paint over later once I figured out what I wanted to do with those rooms. We didn't want to risk getting paint on the new carpet, so we rushed really quickly through painting all the rooms in about two days. We just squeaked by, and the paint was thankfully dry before the carpet guys came, and... Oh man, you guys, I legitimately almost cried when I stepped on the new carpet for the first time. It's so plush and so soft and it feels like walking on a cloud. I love it. <laughs> but after all that was done, we still had more painting to do. The house has a fairly large kitchen and dining room and, well, the kitchen and dining room were... Okay, I'm not going to say what color they were because I don't want to accidentally dox myself or anything, but it was an absolutely horrendous color that was simultaneously way too dark and also way too bright somehow. 
Every time I walked into that room, I could feel my life force being siphoned out of me. It was kind of terrible. So I painted it blue instead, and now it feels like a place where people can actually, you know, live. I also had to paint the laundry room because it was a bit of a mess in there, and for some reason, the ceiling was a weird shade of off-white that in the weird lighting of the laundry room made the ceiling look light teal? It was very strange, so I had to paint that whole room, including the ceilings, but it was such a small room, I kept bumping into the walls and messing up the paint and having to go back over areas again, but thankfully it only took a single evening. For the first few months of living there, I didn't have a washer dryer because the seller took theirs, and I had to go to the laundromat with all my stuff and a bunch of quarters like once a week, but thankfully I was able to take some commissions from my Patreon supporters to save up the money for a set, and now that's one less reason to leave my house. Yay, I'm a hermit. <laughs> Speaking of appliances, in the original sale agreement, the seller said he was going to take the fridge, which I was kind of bummed out again. But then imagine my surprise when I walked in on the final walkthrough day and realized, hey, cool, he left the fridge. Nice. I'm glad I don't have to spend a ton of money on a new fridge and it's broken. Cool. We checked all the settings and messed with it as much as we could, but we couldn't figure out what was wrong with it. It, like, the lights came on, and everything was working fine, and it did everything except get cold. Which, you know, is the main function of a refrigerator. Thankfully, my parents wanted to buy a new fridge anyway, so they just gave me their old one. But during that first month in the house, before I actually owned the place, I ended up having to use my brother's old mini-fridge he had in college which was very low on space, so that was kind of annoying. Anyway, it's been about a year since I bought the house, and there's still some projects that need to be done. I need to repaint the rest of the house, the blinds in a few rooms need to re be replaced, I want to actually repaint the outside too, because I'm not a huge fan of the paint color. And this year I've actually started putting a little bit of work into landscaping the flower beds in the front yard. But it's finally starting to feel like my house, which is... Nice. I'm still hopeful that someday I can move closer to Austin or another larger city. My town I currently live in is nice, but there's not a whole lot to do here, which is a bummer. I have to drive 45 minutes to get to the nearest fabric store, for example, which has put a pretty big damper on any cosplay plans for the foreseeable future, but we'll see. One fun little note I'll leave you guys on is that the town I live in is actually pretty close to a big military base. And normally this isn't really notable, aside from occasionally hearing helicopters go by overhead, but <laughs> a few nights after I moved into the house, at about 5 o'clock in the morning, I heard what sounded like cannon fire. It was this low rumbling noise that I honestly thought was something heavy falling on my roof at first, and I know I didn't imagine it because I woke up and the cats were freaked out too. A few weeks later, after talking to some of my neighbors, I found out that the base apparently likes to run drills with their tanks and artillery sometimes, and if the wind is blowing just right, we can hear it all the way in our neighborhood. And they never want to do it while the sun's up. They always have to play with their tanks when I'm trying to sleep. So that's fun. America, am I right? Yeehaw. <laughs> Okay, everybody, I've got a couple of announcements for the outro. Firstly, I've added a bunch of new conventions to my lineup for the next couple of months, so check the link in the description for my full schedule. I might be coming to a con near you soon, and if I am, you should totally come by and say hi! Why am I doing this voice? <laughs> Secondly, I want to thank my dear pal Levely for lending me their voice for the leasing office skit. They're a very good friend of mine, and also a fellow comic artist, and hey, you should totally go check out their webcomic Goth Western. It's getting a physical release soon. Ooh! so fancy. Link is down below. Nextly, hey, is there something new in the outro? Oh my gosh, I have a fan art reel now. Why am I doing this voice? Uh, I said I was going to do it, and I'm finally doing it. So if you've drawn fan art of me or my VTuber or my characters, and you want to be featured in my videos, I now have a Google form where you can submit your art and have it featured at the end of my videos as they are released. All of the rules and details are in the form, so go check that out. Link is in the description. Lastly, once again, the art in this video is available to purchase as stickers and acrylic keychains on my store, thestarfishface.com. Link is in the description. 
Also, if you enjoy The Somnium Files, I've actually streamed my entire playthrough and I'm currently getting close to finishing the sequel. So if that interests you, I'll be playing live on stream every Friday evening until I finish the game. So come hang out and watch me lose my mind over plot twists and stuff. Uh, check out the live tab on my page for my schedule. If you watched all the way to the end, feel free to tell me about your dream home in the comments. Remember to subscribe for future videos, and I will see you guys next time. Bye!